Back up on my bullshit, back up on the scene. Out here filming wrap ups on reviewing sprees. I just bought a new disc, don't need the time machine. Learning not to chase views, now I feel more serene. Back up on my bullshit. I'm back up on my bullshit. Howdy, it's this one verse, and I'm back on my bullshit with the New Year's book tag. So I'm out of hiatus. It was nice. It was lovely. It was honestly maybe too short. (laughs) I definitely didn't get to do all the things I wanted to do on it. And I think the longer that I was in it, the nicer it felt to not have anything to do. But I, you know, I'm out of it now. I've got the content on the way. And I did some thinking about my channel and what I want to do with it and like the direction I'm going to have going forward. And I'm going to share that in this video. So I did the New Year's book tag last year. I did it ungodly late. I think I put it out in like March or something. And I kind of wanted to see how I did in terms of accomplishing my goals. And so I'm going to reference it a few times. But if you want to see the whole thing, I would just go back and watch it. I'm not trying to do like a reaction video. Anyway, on to the questions. So the first question is, how many books are you planning to read? So last year I said I wanted to read 35 books, which I exceeded by a lot. I read 76 books and I set that goal wanting to slow down and take more time with the books that I was reading. And I don't think I did a good job of doing that. So I'm going to set my new goal at 24 new books and five rereads. I feel like on booktube there's a pressure to be reading very quickly, to be reading as many books as possible. And that kind of isn't working for me like content wise like I'm never going to be a person who has like oh I read like 20 books in a month like that's just never going to happen like even if I took the month off and had nothing to do my attention span is kind of shot like I'm not really sitting down and reading like that anymore I feel like the pressure to like rush through books is partially because I'm getting a lot of books from the library and so I have to get them back at a certain time And especially with how COVID has affected holds and like when I'm able to get books, I don't always get renewals and like there's no guarantee on like how long it'll be until I can get the book back out again. So like once I have it in my hands, I definitely want to get through it. But I feel like it's really not conducive to like me really understanding the book sometimes. I'm starting to pick up more books where like I really do need to reread them to get anything out of them. Like the first time I'm reading through, I'm really just getting a lay of the land. I don't really understand any of the themes that are going on and it's like on a reread that a lot more things start to click and a lot more things start to come together and so since I'm not really going to be out reading anyone in a month um, I think that I should just settle into the fact that I want to do like more slow engagement with whatever it is that I'm reading and then try and restructure around that I think it was also like me misunderstanding the platform like I felt like I had to document like every single bookish thing I did I'd get a lot of congestion because I have like five wrap-ups to get through because maybe I have like a month where I'm like not really reading very much at all and then I have like a month where I'm reading a lot more and so I have to like combine them in weird ways to (laughs) have anything to video and also I feel like I need to be covering as many books as possible to be interesting and I think that was me misunderstanding the platform like I think that if I had like a book that I read like more slowly and I made a couple different videos talking about it from different angles, that would probably be more helpful from like a marketing standpoint for the book if I really enjoyed it. And just like more interesting than me skimming a lot of stuff and like only having like two minutes of content or something in a wrap up. And so I'm just going to think about restructuring my channel because I have been like very wrap up heavy which I think was good because I've been shying away from doing reviews but like now I think I'm ready to try and do other types of things and also I eventually want to do standalone reviews for about like half the books I own that fall within my channel's focus because I have them and it would just be a lot easier to do reviews for those than like library books because I'll have the time to like just go as slowly as I want and I don't need to be worrying about getting it back or anything like that. Next question is name five books that you didn't get to this year but want to make a priority in 2021. So I did pretty good last year, surprisingly. Of the five books I named that I wanted to read last year, I got to four of them. The only one I didn't get to was The Changeling by Victor Laval. So in terms of books I'm trying to get to this year, there's 
Searching for Sycorax, Black Women's Hauntings of Contemporary Horror by Kenitra D. Brooks. This is an analysis of Black female fiction authors writing horror. I like the cover. I'm trying to get more into horror and read some more nonfiction this year, so this seemed like a pretty logical way to fulfill those goals. Then there's A Spectral Hue by Craig Lawrence Gidney. This is a horror story. It's about this fuchsia color that is haunting the folk art of African Americans in this fictional town called Shimmer, Maryland. I haven't read a novella or novel by Craig Lawrence Gidney yet. I've only read his short stories, but what I have, I've really loved. And I am really excited to read something longer from him. Gidney just has some really good stuff. The story I read by him that I fell in love with was retelling of Briar Rabbit and the Briar Patch. That appeared in Anathema Magazine. I'll link that in the description box down below if anyone's interested in checking it out. But I read that and I was just blown away and I have wanted to read like more long form stuff from him. And then the next book up is Kintu by Jennifer Nansibuga Mukumbi. This is a story set in Uganda about a generational curse that affects all the men in the family. And I started this last year because Brown Girl Reading was hosting a read-along of it. Her and Musical Tati had an interview with the author, and that was absolutely fantastic. So I definitely want to get through it at some point, and so I'm going to try and get through it this year. And then the next one is Rage of Dragons by Evan Winters. I think this is one that is getting like a decent amount of hype, so you might have probably heard of it by now. It's a fantasy story that's about revenge, and it's also, I hear, like, kind of a military fantasy. And I've just heard a lot of good things about it, and I figured it's about time that I read it. And the last one is White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. This is a horror story about a house haunted by a collective of women. It's kind of giving me, like, yellow wallpaper vibes. I forget who the author is for that one. I haven't read a whole lot by Helen Oyeyemi. I've only read... I think it was, what, Mr. Fox, which was her retelling of Bluebeard. And I was, like, definitely interested with what else she was going to do. This just seemed like a good place to start. What really sold me on reading this was uh, Kiki of If This Is Paradise has a Goodreads review up that I really enjoyed and really made me want to finally give this story a read. So the next question is, what genre do you want to read more of? Last year I said sci-fi. I don't know if I really achieved that, and I honestly think that's okay. I think I've lived this faux intellectual like fantasy about sci-fi. This year I want to read more nonfiction and horror, and my goal is to read four nonfiction books this year and four horror books this year, and I think that's a decent chunk of my proposed TBR of 24 new books. So. Next question is name three non-book related goals. So last year I said I wanted to level up in my professional life. I kind of feel like I have. I feel like I'm more competent at my job. There's not a whole lot of on-the-job training, so it's kind of like you just kind of learn as you go. But I feel like in general, COVID kind of put the kibosh on on that. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, get into specifics about it. Um, my other goal was to close caption my catalog, which I did okay on. Like, I have most of my, like, old, old videos. Like, when I was still making thumbnails in Microsoft PowerPoint old videos, I have most of those captioned. I just have to get through the lives, and that, like, one-week deadline didn't really happen. My last goal from last year was to finish Okami and Zelda, which, not even close. So I was making good progress on Okami. I really love Okami. I think I gushed about it a lot in my previous New Year's book tag. So I'm not going to do it again. But I love that game. But the controls are kind of frustrating on the Wii. And I'm at Oni Island. I have a place where I have to like stick to a wall and jump. And if I don't make the jump, then I die. And I just don't have the reflexes to pull it off. And I just might, <laughs> I just might be stuck. I just might not clear the game. I don't know. Maybe it's one of the things where I'll come back now and I'll... I'll be so relaxed, I'll have this new perspective, and I'll just, like, nail it, but I'm not counting on it. And I I feel bad. I got bored with Zelda. I never thought I'd see the day that I'd be bored with the Zelda game, but it happened. I've just played so many in-universe games that a lot of the novelty is gone, and I'm just, like, not feeling it. Like, I'm just so used to everything, I'm like, oh, we're in the forest. 
Like, it's not fun anymore. Like, oh, a Deku scrub. Like, oh no. Ah, like, I've gotten the hero sword like three or four times now. Like, it's not, it's not exciting anymore. And it's not like it used to be. So I'll come back to it at some point because I bought it. And I need to clear it. But I don't know. Right now I'm kind of bored with it. So that was last year's. So basically last year's didn't really happen. This year's, my goal is to pitch one essay to four paid publications. I wanted to like write and like actually get paid for it for a little bit. It's just the missions just doesn't happen. Like I have a lot of short stories, but like they're not good. <sighs> they they need work. And it's just frustrating to this wonderful breakthrough moment with a fanfic. I was just like, yes, I'm on a roll. I'm going to hop into the original fic. And the words are just gonna flow. And like, I'm just bored with my characters. I don't like my worlds. So I'm just kind of not really bothered with the short stories right now. But I would like to actually do the essay because it's almost done. And if it doesn't get picked up, I'm just gonna read it aloud on my channel. I just arbitrarily picked the number four. I think I really should, like, be trying to submit to, like, 10 places, but, like, since I'm not trying to do it, like, full-time, I feel like if I go to four places and they're like, no, I'm just gonna put it on my channel and call it a day. So that's goal one. Goal two is that I'm sort of getting more into makeup. Like, I, I fall in and out of it. Like, I got a nice palette a couple years back, uh, a nice eyeshadow palette, and I had my friend show me the ropes. And then I practiced a little bit and then I just put it down for like a year and everything just like left my head. And I want to get to a place where I can do like my own eyeshadow without like looking at like a reference picture. And I want to be able to do eyeliner okay. Like I've never been able to do eyeliner. My eyeliner has always been garbage. And I'm just too old to be asking my cousins to do my makeup for me all the time. So that's just my goal for this year. And my last non bookish goal of the year is kind of vague. My goal is to, I guess, just be more honest and be less focused on being, like, nice or polite. I have, like, issues with being a people pleaser. And I find that one of the ways that comes up is that when I have a contrary opinion, I feel like I can't say it. Or, like, the way I phrase it, I guess, people don't realize that I'm bringing up something serious. And realizing that the amount of effort I put into choosing my words, like, isn't typical like I just think I need to accept that for some people like no matter how you phrase something they're just always gonna view what you're saying as impolite um they're gonna feel a way about it and at a certain point it really isn't my issue anymore if it's something that needs to be said and I need to say it then I just kind of need to speak my piece and go about my business um, so uh, next question is what's a book you've had forever that you still need to read so for last year it was Kindred by Octavia Butler and that's done and so this time around, I'm just going to do my TBR for books that I own that sort of fall within my channel focus and buckle up. It's, it's a long list. So first up is Love by Toni Morrison. This is a story about a man who's basically emotionally unavailable from the summary. And he like cheats a lot on his wife and he dies. And it's about the women in his life picking up the pieces like his wife, his daughter, his side chick, mistress, whatever you call it, them. And next up is Forest of a Thousand Demons by D. Ofa Gunwa. I got this for Christmas last year. It's about a warrior who goes into a forest, it's filled with spirits and demons, and all hell breaks loose. Another one is Joplin's Ghost by Tanana Ribdu. I think this is supposed to be a Phantom of the Opera retelling. It's about a music student who falls in love with Scott Joplin's ghost. Then there's In Search of Our Mother's Gardens by Alice Walker. This is a non-fiction collection. Alice Walker is like a seminal womanist, feminist writer, and I should just read it at some point because I haven't read any non-fiction by her. I feel like authors that I read will like reference Alice Walker as an inspiration, so I should just read her stuff at this point. Then there's Seed Bearing Prince by Devon Sanders. This is about a farmer in space who finds a magic seed and, you know, Hero's Quest happens. Image of Emeralds and Chocolate by K. Murray Johnson. I mentioned this in a haul sometime last year. 
It's about a teen who's taken writing lessons out of college and runs into a vampire. And there's Cold by Constance Burris. This is about a teen who's abducted by a fey princess and he's navigating court drama. Then there's Love in Color by Bolu Babalola. Mentioned that in a haul video and won that through a Twitter giveaway. Then there's Dark Genesis by A.D. Kaboa. It's basically about a slave in, I think it was in Mississippi, who has a run-in with a vampire. I just got a free ebook of this from somewhere like a bajillion years ago and never read it, so I need to just get that out of the way. And then next is An Intimate Detail, How to Choose Where in Love Lingerie by Cora Harrington. And this might seem like the odd one out in terms of like anything I've read ever. Basically, yes, this is an odd one out. Um, when I bought this book, I guess I just thought it was going to be some sort of it girl or something. I just don't know how relevant this book really is going to be for me. Because like I said, I'm schlubby and it's a pandemic. And Cora Harrington's cool if you like are interested in this topic but you don't know if you really want a book of it she has a blog where she puts stuff up for free that i will link down below i haven't like really exhaustively read her stuff but it seems like she does like include posts on like looking for like very large bras or like you've had surgery of some type and like you need like special fitting considerations like underwear for trans and gender non-conforming people stuff like that in general i think her focus is on like vintage lingerie uh, next up is Tales of the Astonishing Black Spark by Charlie J.S.Q. This is sort of a parody slash comedy about this black superhero who's off doing superhero shit. I just had store credit at a thrift store and I saw it and I looked at the Goodreads rating and it looked like decent so I picked it up. The premise reminded me of a short story from the Octavius Brood anthology. Next is Cane River by Lolita Tademi. This is a family memoir, and I just kind of grabbed it from my library because they had, like, a giveaway. Um, this is one where I'm probably going to read it once and then, like, either donate it or do a giveaway for it. Because I just don't really hold on to nonfiction like that once I'm done it. Then there's Stars of the New Curfew by Ben Oakry. This was another case where I had store credit. <laughs> Um, and the cover is great. I love the gold foiling on it and the skulls. This is a short story collection. Then there's Riot Baby by Tochi Onyabuchi. I'm a member of the Tor Book Club, which if you aren't and you like the stuff that Tor puts out, I would recommend it because they give out free ebooks pretty frequently. I think there's like weird terms of service in terms of the country. Like I don't know if it's available for people outside the US. So I would double check that. But like if you're in the US, it's definitely worth doing. I've gotten a few ebooks through there that I definitely wanted. And this is a dystopian about police violence and a girl with superpowers who, despite her abilities, can't save those who matter most to her. And then I also am subscribed to Fire Literary Magazine, which is a magazine devoted to black authors writing speculative fiction. So sci-fi, fantasy, horror, all the genres in between and I really did a bad job of reading the ones from 2020 like I had like a two-year subscription and I think I did a good job of reading like all the ones from 2019 but I basically have all the ones from last year issues 12 to 16 that I haven't read yet so I need to get on that and that was <laughs> my whole TBR of books that I own that fit within my channel focus so last question is one word that you're hoping 2020 will be. Um, last year I said sensational. I think I was just struggling to think of a fun adjective. And like I said, I've been really rethinking my channel and how I approach my channel. And I think the word I'm hoping for this year is collaborative. I think that I've had issues with fixating on chasing subscribers and like viewer metrics and all that and it's like for what like i think at a certain point i needed to be in that grind of like posting at least once a week because i just had to get over discomfort with being on camera and editing and i just kind of thought that once i like you know put my head down to the grindstone and was like getting the content out that the numbers were just going to kind of naturally follow and yes and no I'm pretty happy with the engagement that I have. Like I have familiar faces who come back. I like being able to talk to people about like what I've read and stuff like that. And I definitely have, think I've made like 
friends and connections on here, but um, I don't know if I really need to be chasing like subscribers or like feeling bad that however many people watch my channel, they only watch it for however long. I have like this weird thing where I feel like if I say that I want something, then I'm like jinxing it and I'm not gonna get it. So like, if you'd asked me last year if I wanted to be monetized, I would have been like, no. But like I did want to be monetized and just like after actually like posting weekly for a decent amount of time to the point where I was kind of tired of it and being like nowhere near monetization, like being like years away from monetization, I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that anymore because it's just so far away. And it wasn't just like the thinking about the engagement numbers and stuff that was like making me feel bad. It just felt like a lot of work. And also feeling like I had to get on Twitter to meet people and talk to people and, and feel like I had to maintain a presence over there to better promote my videos and basically like the can of worms that like having a Twitter account opens up in terms of like all the time I lose just scrolling and just like how that makes me feel cruddy. Um, and just like the constant thought feeling I have to worry and like checking to see what the trends are and all this other stuff. And since I'm like nowhere near monetizing and like I don't know if I really have the like stamina to like push to monetize, I'm just not going to worry about that as much. Like I'm going to stay on Twitter because I prefer engaging with people on Twitter. Like I think it's easier to just kind of talk about people's like day to day, what they're reading and what they're finding and stuff. And I just realized at a certain point that in terms of like the energy and the hours I was putting in to like posting weekly and sometimes trying to do posting like two times a week, that like energy and the time, like that was almost a part-time job. And like, I didn't get into this to have a part-time job. I came into this to like have fun and like have a hobby. It was a part-time job that I was doing for like internet clout. <laughs> um, and I was just like, this is silly. The issue is that like, I'm already feeling kind of tapped out in terms of how much work I want to put in. And what it comes down to is that I just really value my peace. <laughs> I I just like not really doing much of anything, you know? I like relaxing. It felt like I was putting like an artificial pressure on myself to get out content. I don't think I'm even getting the most out of my channel, the way I've been structuring stuff. So like keeping in mind that I'm doing this to like make connections with people and like I'm really going to be thinking about how I can restructure this channel to like keep that in the forefront. And so I'm not like stressing myself out over nothing really. So I haven't really decided what that's going to look like yet in terms of my posting schedule. Like in particular, I think I'm not getting the most out of StreamYard. Like doing a live with someone is like really fun. And it's also like very little work on my end. And so I'm going to be trying to do more streamed content most definitely. Whether that is like round tables or like author interviews or buddy read discussions, maybe hosting a read along because I do want to reread NK Jemison stuff at some point. And it might just be really simple to just schedule a read along as I'm working my way through her work. And I'm not sure how it's going to work content wise. If it's going to be like, okay, I do like one month of pre edited content and then I do one month where I'm just doing mostly streaming based content or if it's gonna be one month where I'm like posting like one to two times a week and then like one month where I just take a break and I don't do anything I don't really know yet so yeah if people have suggestions on that definitely comment them below I'll take them into consideration I like the thing I have now where I'm like okay I've picked my schedule for the month I'm gonna put that in my about section I tried to do that on Twitter but I'm gonna do a better job of getting that into my YouTube about section and then tag a friend. You're tagged. Whoever you are, whoever's watching this, consider yourself tagged. <laughs> so that was my video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. You know, feel free to comment down below on anything I mentioned. What are your goals for this new year in terms of bookish whatnot? If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It's a good way to stay up to date with me and my reading activities. Like I said, my schedule for the month is going to be the about section. And I'm also on Twitter and Goodreads, which I will link in my description box below. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.